Hello and welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm Andrew Womack and I've got Carrie Pickett here with me. She's a blessing. Her and her <laughs> husband are vice presidents of our Karis Bible College and just a real blessing. Man, Amen. they they do a lot of stuff that I used to have to do. <laughs> I appreciate you a bunch. Amen. And we're going to have a great Bible study tonight. I'm going to be talking about how to keep your heart from being troubled. And uh, Man, Carrie, we've given an illustration just this afternoon just about her daughter having a little trauma and stuff. And I tell you, life is terminal. <laughs> you run into some situations. It's true. And so you need to learn how to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. I think this will really bless you. But first of all, we want you to interact with us. And so I'm going to let Carrie give you all that information. Well, welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We love having you as our, our family watching with us tonight. If you're new and you've never been a part of this, then welcome. This is a live Bible study, which means you get to interact with us. And we love hearing from you. And what the one way you can do that is go down to your chat section of whatever forum that you're watching on tonight. Go down there and you can ask questions. So Andrew's going to minister for about 35 minutes. And then our last 15 minutes, we're going to try to take to answer as many questions as possible that come in tonight. So please send us your questions. This is a way you get to interact. Uh, we know that you're going to get a word from the Lord tonight. So if you have a question in your heart, we'd love to answer that. As well as we have our prayer minister standing by. Now our prayer ministers, uh, our prayer ministry has been going for 30 years, our helpline. And we have some of the best prayer ministers around because they love God, they love the word, and they pray with authority. And if you... Let me just interrupt and say, I was talking to one of our prayer ministers <laughs> today and uh, he's been by, uh, associate pastor of a church and he's just gone through the training and he's only been answering the phones, I think for six weeks. And he says, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to him. He oh, says wow. he has never in all of his pastoral days had the experience that he's had here because you'll have these calls where, that are desperate mm -hmm. and, and there's yep. no way to prepare and it's just boom, one after another. Yep. He said it's it's been the greatest thing that's happened to him. That's so cool. Really? Well, it's it's really we have people call in for anything, just agreement for for um, you know life life altering things, maybe something the enemy's hitting them with, and we just able to pray and see really truly signs, wonders, miracles, and encouragement to keep going. So pray with us. Call us 719-635-1111, 24 hours a day, five days a week, and then on Saturday and Sunday from seven. 7.30 in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. And so this is this is our way that we want to be able to bless you, serve you, and just partner up with the things that God has called you to do in your life. So this is an awesome opportunity. One of the other things is that you get the way you want to interact tonight is we'll actually send you our Bible study notes every Tuesday night if you sign up for them. So go to awmi.net slash Bible study. Then you're going to get notes from Andrew or we have numbers of guest speakers that come on Tuesday nights and they have fabulous messages messages and we'll send those notes to you. When you do that, you are then automatically entered into a drawing that we have on Tuesday nights. And last week we had Money Mastery by Billy Eppar. He's our CEO here at the ministry. It's an amazing book that teach you about finances and, and investing and just how to use your money for the kingdom of God. So uh, Michael Miller, you won that. So Michael, we're going to get that to you. And this week we have Effortless Change. This is phenomenal. This blessed me, changed my life when I read it. And so you guys would be tremendously blessed if you read this book. And, and uh, if you say, hey, I don't know if I can, uh, if I'm going to win it, but I still would like it, then call in our, to our prayer ministers because then any material that you need and you're saying, hey, I need to study about this or I need to learn about this, call our prayer ministers. And they're also going to direct you to over the 200,000 hours of free material that we have available on awmi.net plus all of our resources. And so you're going to be super blessed by that. One of the things we do besides this, we have a free giveaway for every single person watching tonight. So this free giveaway is actually of one of our Karis Bible College courses. So this is an eight hour course. It's phenomenal. It's called Basics of Righteousness. This is one of Andrew's courses. We teach it in first year, the very first semester. This is how we jumpstart the students into getting into the Word of God. And you will be blessed by that work. So we're giving it away for free for you and anyone in your family or friends that says, I want to take some time to get into the Word of God. So, so what's the value of that? 
$120 value. Well, this so, is quite a gift. This is quite a gift, you guys. And so normally if you were calling to our distance education and say, hey, I'd like to get Basics of Righteousness, it's about $120. And so we want to give this to you for free because we know that the Word will change your life, truly, an effortless change. Once you put the Word in, it starts to change you, and it is worth it, you guys. So the way, if you're interested, the way you go to that is awmi.net slash basics course. You're going to see it here on the screen. And so I would check that out. And even if you're like, you know what, I don't have time for it right now, but I know my niece or my nephew or my brother or my, get it for friends and family, and then um, make time for it for yourself. So anyway, this is what we have going on. Lastly, we have our Kingdom Business Summit. You heard a little bit about this last week. Uh, this is where we're going to be talking about business, finances, uh, just how you can prosper. And we have special guest, uh, Billy Epperhart. He's our CEO and John Maxwell. And so he's going to be teaching. So we have a lot of people coming to this conference and you would be blessed. That's June 16th through the 18th. All of our, also our Stand Courageous Conference. We're having uh, General Boykin come in, Tony Perkins come in. Uh, and so we're going to be sharing on Stand Courageous. We're going to talk about how to uh, stand in these times in the political arena. Also the Summer Family Bible Conference. All the kids, all the teenagers, this is an amazing time to come to Colorado, spend some family time. And while you're getting the word in the mornings and in the evenings, uh, uh, with all of the instructors and teachers and guest ministers we have coming, your children and your teenagers are going to get the same powerful, life-changing word. I have so many teenagers that we used to, that used to be in the Summer Family Bible Conference that grew up and then they've come to Karis. Now they're married in ministry. It's amazing. So uh, I would encourage you to bring your family, make plans for that. You don't look old enough to have th that. No, I'm just a young pup. So I was a teenager leading teenagers. <laughs> uh, I learned from Bill Johnson last week that he says, I dye my hair gray. He says, I'm really young. I'm just trying to reach the older crowd. <laughs> I leaned over to Mike and I said, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So July 5th through 9th, if you're interested in any of those conferences, then go to awmi.net slash events. And this is a great way. Also, if you're saying, hey, I'm blessed by this ministry. I'm blessed by these Bible studies. Monday through Friday, we have these Bible studies. Monday on Friday at 7 in the morning. Oh, so oh. sorry. Monday and Friday, 10 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday and Thursday night, 6 p.m., and then bright and early, Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. So if you've been blessed by this and say, I just want to be a partner, I want to bless, I want to sow into people's lives and them getting the Word of God, then we would love to have you be a part of this ministry with us in Touching Lives. So go to awmi.net slash give, or when you call in for prayer and you call in for resources, just say, hey, I would love to be able to give at this time, and our prayer ministers will help you do that. So praise God. Well, I know we have amazing things planned tonight because you always have amazing words. Well, I've been studying through the book of John and I just finished it. I've now moved on, but uh, just some of these things that I've actually got teachings on just really ministered to me and I thought it would really bless people. Mm -hmm. But I want to share from John chapter 14 where Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God, believe also in me. And you know, uh, as we were saying at the beginning of the program, we live in a fallen world and there's just going to be things that happen. I had two things happen today that could have troubled me mm -hmm. um, big time. And yet I've just learned that there's no reason. You know, if you look at things in the light of eternity, 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16, 17, and 18 right there, talk about Paul said he just had a light affliction and yet he had more problems than any of us had, but he said it was a light affliction because it was just for a moment and uh, he wasn't looking at just the things that could be seen. He was looking at the unseen. So if you can take being beaten and stoned and left for dead and, and imprisoned for years at a time and yeah. all of these things and call them a light affliction, <laughs> then really we don't have any excuse it's for true. talking about how bad our situation is. It's true. And as we were talking right before the broadcast tonight, uh, um, Ellie, uh, Carrie's little daughter, had something happen, you know, that was important to her. But in the light of eternity, yeah. well, even in the light of her life, like yeah. when she's a teenager. Yeah, it won't mean anything. It won't her. mean anything. And see, that's just a very small deal. But if you look at things in the light of eternity, Mm -hmm. All of the things that bother us right now are not that big of a deal. Yep. So you can't control everything that happens out there. The only thing you can control is your heart mm -hmm. and your response. And that's what Jesus yep. said. He said, you let not 
your heart be troubled. Most people would believe that you can't even do this. It's not up to me. If somebody comes and attacks me, if somebody spits in my face, if they mm -hmm. slander me, if they do something, I can't help. You know, it's just normal to respond this way. Well, it may be normal for people that don't know the Lord, but for us that have God on the inside of us, you know, when I see Paul over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 saying, it's just a light affliction. Mm -hmm. I had uh, one of my staff recently talking about something that Paul said, and they said, man, I'm not sure I could do that. You know, that's not the way I look at things. Mm -hmm. I look at it as if Paul did that. He said, it's not him living, it's Christ living in mm -hmm. him. And if Paul could respond that way, yep. then I can respond that way. Mm -hmm. I might not be able to respond that way at this exact moment because I'm not there, but that means it's like running a marathon. Yeah. I may not be able to run a marathon today, but I have the ability to do it if I would train and work for it. Yep. So anytime I see Paul saying that he just had a light affliction, well, then that's the potential that I have. That's and good. so when he said, the Lord would be unjust to tell you to let not your heart be troubled if you couldn't do it, if that's he right. was asking you to do something that's humanly impossible. So that right there is encouraging to me. Some people mm -hmm. see this as discouraging. It's like God's telling me to do something I can't do. Well, it's true. <laughs> In the natural, you yeah. can't let not your heart be troubled. Matter of fact, I actually uh, had some people one time saying, you're in denial and you just aren't facing reality. <laughs> and if all you look at is just the natural realm and if you only look at things through the eyes of the physical realm and what other people do, well, then that's true. But if you see yourself in Christ, a mm -hmm. new person, and that it's not you living, but Christ living in you, you can live a life where your heart isn't troubled regardless of what's going on. And let me put this in context for you because if you read this, John 14, 15, and 16 is what Jesus spoke to His disciples yep. the night before His crucifixion. Yeah. So He was about to be arrested. They were going to have to flee for their life. They were going to see Jesus crucified, dead, and buried. And He's saying, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Now see, most people, it's kind of like they have a little fence around them and they say, well, yeah, if it's a hangnail, if it's a headache, if it's something minor, then something within these bounds, then yes, I'm, I'm going to overcome, you know, the little nuances and the things that happen to me on a daily mm -hmm. basis. But if you're going through a divorce, if somebody comes out and slanders you, if this happens, if you lose your job, if you get to notice that you're dying of cancer, you can't help but be troubled. Mm -hmm. The Lord didn't put any qualifications on this. Matter of fact, at the end of this teaching, over in John chapter 16 and in verse thir uh, 33, He said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. <laughs> And what an understatement this was, because this is like in the next 30 minutes, you're going to have tribulation. You're going you're gonna to see a band of soldiers come out to arrest me, yeah. and uh, Peter's going to cut off a guy's ear, and they could have all been killed or, mm -hmm. or go to jail, and they're going to see Jesus. It looks like all of their hopes in Jesus were dashed. And so he says, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But then he says, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Not right. I'm going to, but I have. It was a done deal. Mm -hmm. God calls those things that be not as though they were. And did you know that, so this is the context. And if he could tell his disciples that we're going to see him arrested, crucified, slandered, brutalized, mocked, and yeah. just on and on you could go. And if you could survive the crucifixion without your heart being troubled, well, then you and I don't have an excuse. Yeah. We should be stronger than we are, but most people aren't looking to Scripture yeah. and they aren't looking to people like Paul who said, you know, it's just a light affliction. They're looking to the leaders of our society, our psychology and the people who, if you put all of their integrity together, it wouldn't fill a thimble. <laughs> and they're looking to people like that for what norm is yeah. and they're looking to movies and sitcoms and mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah, true. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you have the ability to let not your heart be troubled or God would have been unjust to tell you to do that. All right, so how do you do it? In the last part of that verse, it says, you believe in God, believe also in me. 
Faith is how you overcome. Mm -hmm. And faith, we could spend weeks discussing faith, but faith is being able to see something with your heart that you may not be able to see with your eyes. That's right. You know, for instance, if you're believing for a healing, once it comes, it would be wrong to say, well, I'm believing for my healing. No, because it's, you've already got it. It's already manifest. Yeah. Belief is That's something good. that you are looking for something in the future. As a matter of fact, I won't mm -hmm. go into this teaching, but Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Faith and hope are linked right. and hope is something that you can't see. So faith is always in the future. Now, it may you may have faith present tense, but it's about future events and things like this. So anyway, uh, my point is that the way you overcome the negative things that come at you are through faith, trust in God. And the very next verse says, in verse 2, he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And when I first read this, I thought, now what does talking about heaven have to do with let not your heart be troubled mm -hmm. and believing? And, That's good. and I could say a lot about that. Matter of fact, I just happened to have a 16-part series teaching them, yes, <laughs> entitled just The Christian to have Survival it. <laughs> Kit. But let me just say quickly that if your life is so bad that there is nothing good that you can see, it just looks like an absolute train wreck, disaster is coming and there's no way to avoid it. If worse comes to worse, you know what you can do? You can just close your eyes and think about heaven mm. and think, Father, all of this is going to be over soon. Yeah. And then I'm going to spend eternity in heaven. This life is like the snap of a finger compared to eternity. Mm -hmm. We don't, most of us don't have that perspective, but yeah. if you think about it, what the Word of God teaches, that's true. Say, for instance, if the doctor tells you that you've got some terminal disease and that you've only got a couple of months to live or something like that, most people would feel justified in letting their heart be troubled. Matter of fact, many people would even say that something's wrong with me if I'm not troubled mm -hmm. because psychology has had such a profound impact on our society. Yeah. But if you really think about it from Scripture, like Paul was saying that we aren't looking at things that can be seen. It's only for a moment that this trouble is going to hang around. If you look at things from God's perspective, really there's no reason to be upset even if the doctor tells you you're going to die. If yeah. you are going to lose all of your assets, if everybody hates you. You could just put a, you know, a bunch of different scenarios on, scenarios on this, but there's really no reason to let your heart be troubled because the worst thing that could happen is you die and go to heaven and you spend eternity in a mansion mm -hmm. <laughs> that is that it's taken God 2,000 years to prepare. Did you know He only crea He created the heavens and the earth in six days? He's been working on our mansion for 2,000 years. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? It's going to be awesome. <laughs> we sing these songs like when, I all, when we all get to heaven, what a day that's going to be. And then the doctor tells you you're going and you start crying. <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. I'm telling you, we are so focused on the moment. Again, this reminds me of Ellie, your daughter, which I'm not trying to minimize. You know, it was something that was disappointing to her today, but in the... Life, life her things. life, it is not going to be a major deal. Exactly. And in the light of our life, not just here in this life, but in the next, whatever problem you're facing is no big deal. Yeah. You know, one of the things I do is keep a journal. And I don't do it often, but I will go back and look at things. And I'll go back and I record what happened and the things that I dealt with during that day and stuff. And I go back and look at something that was 10 years ago and I don't even remember it happening. It was such a minor thing, but it yep. was important that day. Yep. But 10 years later, it's a non-issue. It's true. It's true. And that's the way it is with most of the stuff yeah. that we deal with. It's just not that big of a deal. And so we should not let our heart be yep. troubled. And I also have a teaching on uh, that I took from this that is entitled Harnessing Your Emotions. And one of the things that I teach there is that when a tragedy happens or anything happens to you, your emotions 
are where sin is conceived. That's based on James chapter 1. It says uh, sin when it conceives, or lust when it conceives, brings forth sin. Mm, that's good. And that word lust is the King James, but mo modern translations will say desires or emotions, things like that. So your emotions are where sin is conceived. And it uses this terminology, conceived, like when you have a child. You don't, the stork doesn't bring a, a child. You have to conceive a child. And if there is no conception, there will never be a birth. Likewise, when you get negative emotions, whether you know it or not, you are having intercourse mm -hmm. with the devil, mm -hmm. with fear, with doubt, with unbelief and it is going to cause something to be birthed in you. So the way to do things is not to conceive it. Mm -hmm. You have to grab control of your emotions. And most people honestly are very emotional and they, when something happens, they just allow their emotions to run its course and they, mm -hmm. they indulge them until they're totally exhausted. And then they'll come to the Lord and say, all right, God, I've got to believe you. But then you're going to have to have an abortion, a miscarriage along the way somewhere because you have conceived something. You know, when my son died, my oldest son called me in, uh, at 4.15 in the morning and said, Dad, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, Peter is dead. And I asked him what happened. And then I said, don't let anybody touch him till we get there. And it took us an hour and 15 minutes to get up and drive into town. And um, anyway, I knew these principles that we we're talking about and these exact verses came to my heart, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. And I knew that if I uh, indulged my grief and sorrow and confusion and, and every other thing that was trying to come at me, that I, it'd dig a hole, a pit, and I wouldn't be able to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I just by faith started praising God, completely contrary to what I felt. Yeah. But I started praising God. There's so many scriptures. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Anybody can praise God on the other side of the Red Sea, but it takes faith to praise God on this side before the Red Sea. Exactly. And Dancing on the other side. That's right. <laughs> and so I, we just started praising God. And when I started praising God, you know, the Bible says that you abound in faith with thanksgiving. Yeah. Out of Colossians mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 7. And so when you start praising God by faith, not by feeling, but by faith, it also, Jesus said, it is strength to still the enemy and the avenger. And that was That's putting good. Matthew chapter 21 together with Psalms chapter 8 where he was quoting that verse. So there's a lot of things I could say about that. But when you start praising God, for one thing, it makes you focus past your problem. Yeah. Because if you are focused on the problem, like with my son being dead for nearly five hours, there's nothing really to be thankful and praising God for. I was looking past what had happened to the promises of God. And I immediately started thinking about prophecies concerning him. And I realized that, man, those prophecies hadn't been fulfilled. And for them mm -hmm. to be fulfilled, he had to live. And within just a very short period of time, yeah. I was laughing, not by faith, but because I honestly saw that this was going to be a great miracle. And because of it, we, when we got in, my oldest son menaced, and he said, I don't know what happened, but five or ten minutes after I called you, uh, Peter just sat up and started talking. <laughs> and he was in a morgue. He was in a cooler, stripped naked with a toe tag on. They had pronounced him dead. And he sat up and started talking, and no brain damage. Mm. As he says, no more than he had before. <laughs> and anyway, I can guarantee you, if I would have <laughs> let my emotions go and if I'd have gotten my heart broken and grieving and things like this, I'm not condemning anybody who does that. I understand that is natural. That's normal. Yeah. But brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is we aren't just natural. Yeah. We have God living on the inside of us. And there is no reason that we have to live our life like just a natural it's human true. being. Amen. You know, one of the songs I make fun of a lot is the song that says, One day at a time, sweet Jesus. And part of the words are, Lord, I'm only human. I'm just a man. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. 
I'm not only human. Yeah, that's right. I've been born again, and I am wall to wall Holy, Holy Ghost on the inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for me to sit there and just act like a person who doesn't have God living on the inside of me, doesn't have raising from the dead power, and for me to cave and just fall apart like everybody else is denying who yeah. I am and what I have. That's good. And so I'm telling you, you do not have to let your heart be troubled. And the burden of this falls on you. It's God's power. Yeah. In the natural, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. This is beyond human ability. God has put His supernatural power on the inside of you, but you're the one who flips the switch. You're one, the one who starts the process. You're the one who has to make the decision. And then once you do that, God will keep that which you've committed to. Amen. So anyway, That's I just awesome. offer these things to you because we got a lot, we got so many negative things going on in a yeah. nation, yeah. not in, not counting all of the daily things yeah. that happen. Uh, Mike and Carrie had another disappointment about them, not just their daughter today. And yet <laughs> she was, after she preached to her daughter, turned around God and God preached me. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear your message? <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> and so we just have things happen all of the time. We live in a fallen world. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have some stuff happen. Yeah. But you do not have to fall apart like a $2 Amen. suitcase. You have the supernatural power of God living on the inside of you. And That's so good. you have to stand. And if you will stand, I, I taught on this mm -hmm. not too long ago, but in John chapter, um, where was, no, it was Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 where it says the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. And that word helps our infirmities yeah. is a compound, four compound Greek words that means to take hold together with. Mm, In good. other words, He doesn't do it for you. It's not automatic. You can't do it without Him. But if you will start believing God and doing what His Word says, the Holy Spirit will take hold together with you and supernaturally energize good. your faith stand. But you, He doesn't force it on you. You have to invite it by taking a step of faith before it, you see all, all the Red Sea part. So that's good stuff. That's really good. That'll really help people. So I've got a teaching Amen. entitled The Christian Survival Kit. Mm -hmm. I've got another one entitled The Christian First Aid Kit, which is a condensed version of The Christian Survival Kit. It's a teaching <laughs> from John 14, 15, and 16. And then I've got a teaching entitled Harnessing Your Emotions that I think is either a five or six uh, teaching album. I love and Harnessing Your Emotions. Yeah, it's good. It's excellent. I think that that's the big thing. You have to make a decision. How am I going to respond? And I think that's the thing. That's, that's why I was teaching my daughter today. How are you going to respond? Because God's, God's already won the victory. Now you have to choose. You have to choose it. Yeah. So we had some really good questions here. So I want to jump into these. So um, <clears throat> Nella, uh, Nelly8 asks on YouTube, she said, if something troubles, suddenly troubles our heart, could that be the Holy Spirit's warning us about something that will happen? There is a good kind of troubling. For instance, the scripture says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, right after Jesus, well, it was before Jesus said this about let not your heart be troubled. In the 11th chapter of John, it says he was troubled twice mm -hmm. and he groaned in the spirit. But the way that I look at that is that there is a good kind of troubling. You ought to be grieved when you mm -hmm. see a bad situation, but not grieved because of self. It would be grieved yeah. because you see where this nation is headed, because you see where another person is headed. You see the potential of what Satan is trying to do, but it's not selfish, it's compassion. So if you are grieved or troubled because you love God, you love His kingdom, you love this nation, you love someone that you're praying for, then I look at that as compassion. Uh, but when you are depressed and discouraged and mm -hmm. fearful, that's all selfish. Perfect yeah. love casts out fear. Mm -hmm. And there shouldn't be any fear in the troubling. It's just like, you know, uh, Paul said that you sorrow, but it was a godly sorrow. You yeah. sor sorrowed after a godly sort so that you might have no um, harm from me. So there is a right type of being troubled 
Yeah. But, but I think what we've been talking about tonight is just letting the things of this world, the cares of this life come and take root on the inside of you. Yeah, that's good. Um, so Jam Toast on uh, YouTube asks this, how do you not let your heart be troubled when you have made a mistake? Well, that's, that's good. You know what? You have to learn how to forgive yourself. That's good. Amen. And I, I make mistakes. I just, um, in the last few years, I said something about a person that was just totally wrong. I mean, what I said was true. It was my f reaction to something, but there was no reason for me to say this. I criticized a person and I did it publicly and their wife was in the auditorium. And she came up, didn't talk to me, but she talked to my staff and cried and I was wrong. I shouldn't have said it. I wasn't malicious. I wasn't meaning it bad, but nonetheless, it was just wrong, and I should have known better. And you, you know what? You may think, well, that's minor compared to something that I've done. You've gone out and gotten drunk or robbed a store or something. I don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, it just really bothered me that yeah. after 50-something years of God working with me, I still, my flesh is still there and intact. And if you get out of the spirit, you're going to do some dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the way I dealt with that was first of all, to humble myself. I called this guy and apologized and he was very gracious about the whole thing. And so we're still friends and we do things together. So that was good. But then I had to just go to the Lord and say, God, yeah. I, I know that you still love me and you loved mm -hmm. me. You commended your love towards me and that while I was yet a sinner yeah. and I had to remind myself that God doesn't love me because of who I am, but because he is love. Yeah, that's good. And I had to just step back into that unconditional love of God. That's, that's the way you have to deal with it. That's good. So Mulalo on Facebook asks this, how does one remain standing strong in faith in the times we live in where things which are wrong according to the Word of God are being normalized in society, in a world where most people don't take the Word of God seriously? So how does one remain standing strong in faith? Well, there's multiple ways. One of the things that I've been doing, as a matter of fact, my TV programs this week are talking about the third great awakening. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I'm doing to help me stand against all of the negative things that we see is that I'm taking a word that God gave me that we are already in a third great awakening. Yeah. And the difference between a revival, such as a charismatic revival, and the first and the second great awakening, the difference is that a revival may stir people up, it may cause people to be born again, but it doesn't disciple people and it doesn't change the culture. An awakening changes the culture. And God told me that we are already in a third great awakening. And so I take that word and put that up against all of the negative reports that I'm hearing. And I just choose to believe God more than what I see. Amen. But then I also take all of the positive things. Like if you would go watch my television programs, uh, I watched the program today while I was exercising and David Barton was giving examples of great things that are happening right now that you won't hear on the national news. Yeah. But there's awesome things happening. And so you have to intentionally, on purpose, strategically look for the good stuff. If all you do is listen to the 10 Spies Network, you're going to be depressed. <laughs> you're going to be discouraged. And you need to counter it by looking for positive things in our society. Yeah. But of course, look here in the Word of God. And you can mm -hmm. see times that the Israelites were a thousand times worse mm -hmm. than what we're experiencing right here in the U.S. And yet God turned the thing around and I believe he's answered our prayer. So you have to be intentional to yeah. see the positive, look yeah. for it. That's good. So Sharon on YouTube asked this, she says, if you ask God to remove people away from you that he shows you are not good for you, does that include siblings? I know God told Moses to leave his family. Does God still do that with us today? I believe he does. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to say that because you might just be ticked off <laughs> and, you, and you're saying, well, this is God speaking to me. You need to make sure it's God yeah. that is telling you this. But yeah, there are toxic relationships that you need mm -hmm. to remove from them. Now that doesn't mean that you just close the door and bolt it and make it so that you can never uh, see that relationship yeah. put back together. You ought to always keep yeah. some form of communication going. I just had a man this last week ask me about his brother who just hates him and says he's a cult, which 
I've had that happen. My brother has actually called me a cult. Mm -hmm. And yet I never responded in kind. I kept loving him and saying nice things. And anyway, God has restored the relationship and we have a great relationship okay. and stuff. So, uh, but some people are easier to love from a distance. And so you may have to put some parameters. Like I got another person I'm thinking of right now that their mother is just condemning them and saying everything in my life is your fault, which it's not. And you just have to establish and say, look, if this is the way you're going to be, uh, I'm not going to be able to be around you or something like that, but I love you. You send them cards. You, you yeah. maintain the relationship to a degree that you can without having that poison get into you. And so uh, it, it can happen, but I'd say you need to be cautious about yeah. making sure it's just not your flesh that's wanting to pull away. That's good. So this question is really good. I think this has maybe will help a lot of people. Shelly on Facebook asks this, how do we deal with a, situa a circumstance that has a time stamp on it? We planted a hay crop in a field that we believe will produce a prosperous fruit for our livestock and it'll be a financial blessing to us. However, we also realize there is certain weed in the field that is poisonous to livestock. I curse the weed like Jesus did the fig tree. However, there is time for us to get a spray application to kill the weed in the natural. Is it showing a lack of faith if we use a solution to do what we prayed to happen naturally? I don't think so. It would depend on what God has spoken to you. God could just tell you to believe supernaturally, but there's nothing wrong. Like if you get a cut on your arm and stuff, I've actually seen cuts. Matter of fact, I've got a cut on my knee right now where I hit my leg with a chainsaw uh, <laughs> last week. I know. <laughs> and uh, so I just didn't believe in God for it. But if it was to the point that the thing wouldn't quit bleeding and something like that, is there anything wrong with going and getting that sewed up? All you're doing is just helping the healing process. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so th there's a balance here. You know, some things are not all spiritual or all natural. Yeah. Sometimes you uh, pray for victory over your enemies, but rather than just waiting on God to wipe them out, you fire the gun. Yeah. And that's not unbelief. <laughs> it's acting on your faith. So Amen. you just have to let the Holy Ghost lead you on that. Uh, we have a question here. Ruthie says, Ecclesiastics mentions there's a time for war and a time for peace. How can we prepare our hearts in times of peace so that when tribulation and persecution comes, it's not hard to tell the flesh to shut up? I'm not sure I totally understood that. Can you explain? How do, how, how do we prepare our hearts in times of peace so that when tribulation and tribulation comes... So she's not talking about peace in like war and peace. She's just talking about when everything's going good in your life, how do yeah. you prepare yourself for... Yeah, when there's when it, there's a time for war and a time for peace, meaning that there's going to be different times where things are easy and then there's persecution. How do you use the season now so that when difficulty, difficulty comes, you're able to tell your flesh. Well, the way I deal with difficulty is I just have a personal relationship with the Lord and I do what God tells me to do regardless of what the consequences are. Obedience is my part. Results mm -hmm. are God's part. And so if I'm obeying God and if there's bad situations, persecution or something in my life, then I just keep obeying the Lord and I keep mm -hmm. in relationship with Him and I, I assure my heart that I didn't cause this. Yeah. God, I'm here because of you. And so this is actually your problem and you cast your care about the Lord over on it. So really it's all goes back to relationships, which is something I know you really yeah. emphasize a lot too. If you have a personal relationship with the Lord, it says he will comfort you in all of your tribulations so that you'll know how to comfort other people. And so the Holy Spirit will encourage you and, and build you up. And I would say this too, going back to relationship with God, I just because things are going easy or maybe they're not as hard as they were in the past, that's not a time that you pull up. I take my foot off the gas pedal in my relationship with God. Like it's good. Yesterday's bread is enough. I've got enough revelation. I mean, you got to keep, you got to keep a consistent daily relationship with God yeah. because there's things that he's wanting to teach you today that help you today. There's things that he has you start to meditate on today that you pull out of your heart later on and the spirit of God is able to speak that language of the word word when you need it. Amen. So I'd be serious about your relationship with God. Now, not in fear of, well, you never know what's around the corner and the devil's this big bad monster out there to get us. And that's not a fear. It's in preparation that when difficulty comes because you're in the world, you're not of it, but you're in it, your heart is prepared. 
You know, it was uh, August, I think the, anyway, I forget the exact date now, but it's August 2019 that I was out in my spa, spa real early in the morning and I was thinking about things, seeing patterns, and I said, God, what's going to happen in the next decade in my life? And I mean real clearly, he said, you don't want to know. <laughs> and I thought, well, I do want to know, but he said, no, you don't want to know. And I've thought about that a lot. And if we knew sometimes the negative things, like in 2020, I don't know if that's exactly what the Lord was talking mm -hmm. about, but 2020 was a hard year mm -hmm. with all of the restrictions. We had to file two lawsuits against the government. They yeah. filed two lawsuits against us. We had to face being arrested. Mm -hmm. I wasn't arrested, but we had to plan for it. And if I'd have known that all of those things were coming, I still would have stood and have done yeah. what God told me, but it mm -hmm. wouldn't have... I would have, in a sense, dreaded it, knowing that it was coming. It's just so much better to every day, God, yeah. I love you, and whatever's going to happen today, you're going to pull me through it. Yeah. So there's, there's a place for just walking with the Lord day by day, asking for your daily bread, not for a year's supply. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Crystal42 on chat says this, I'm in nursing school, which is, which as we know is very stressful and rigorous. I have started, I started having severe anxiety and heart palpitations a few months ago until I found out about your ministry. I meditate on John 14. How do I allow things to take place and peace be stilled in my spirit without doubt? I find myself turning to the scripture a lot. Is this doubting in God? Well, that seems like multiple questions. <laughs> Let me use this verse. This is what I thought of when I first heard that. It says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Then in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Notice you have to humble yourself. God doesn't humble you. If it's done to you, it's humiliation. Humility is voluntary. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're having anxiety yeah. and it's causing physical problems, I'm saying this in love, but the problem is you haven't humbled yourself. Mm. And humility isn't only not being arrogant about yourself. Humility is saying, God, this is yours. This is bigger than me. I can't handle this. When you are worried and stressed out and taking care, it's because you are feeling the responsibility that you have to fix this problem. You have to work this thing out. Mm -hmm. That's not humility. Mm -hmm. Humility is to, say, to submit yourselves to God. And Father, I cast my care. That's why it also says that. You cast your care over on the Lord. If you haven't cast your care, if you are still bearing the burden of how to solve this problem, yeah. then you haven't cast your care, you haven't humbled yourself, you mm -hmm. are still taking the responsibility for fixing this problem. And I tell you, you just aren't qualified. I don't care who you are. I can't handle the pressures and the things that come against me. I have to cast them over on the Lord. Amen. And so people will say, well, take care. And I'll say, for nothing, because <laughs> I'm not going to take care. That's you know, we had, again, a, a situation happen today that, man, could have really bothered me. And I just said, look, I am not dealing with this. I'm going to go solve this thing. And then, I, well, we had a meeting. It was after our meeting this afternoon with Carrie and Mike and stuff that we solved it. But we solved the problem in 30 minutes. And I could have just worried over that thing for days. What do I do? And it's dealt with. Mm -hmm. So you have to get, that's humility. Humility isn't just going around saying I'm no good. Humility is being submitted to God. God, this is your problem. I'm your child. I'm doing what you told me to do. This is your problem. You give me wisdom. You show me what to do. Oh, man. That's awesome. So two questions. Um, Karen and Mandy, I'm going to kind of combine these because they're kind of the same thing. Uh, Karen asked about that she has no peace with a new supervisor causing a lot of stress and making decisions and just, just how do they find peace? And Mandy asked this question too. When it comes to not letting my heart be troubled, I'm struggling with people taking advantage of me at work because I never say no. What is the biblical way to stand up myself and create healthy boundaries? As a result, I'm often stressed out, overextended because I'm running around wanting to serve everybody. So you've I, got situations that their own heart and then other people. 
I tell you, one of the ways that one of my employees dealt with this, Stan Priest, because he, he ran our computer, whole computer program for a long time. Now we've grown to the, he's just got a portion of it. But I would just say, Stan, do this, Stan, do this, Stan, do this. Mm -hmm. And I think I might have been like, she's describing her. <laughs> and you know what Stan finally did? He just came and he says, here's a list of what you've told me to do, one through 15 projects that I'm working on. Would you prioritize them? Which one? And by, and he did it real kind, but it made a point. Yeah. <laughs> that I've got more to do than what one human being can get done. And what do you want me to let go undone in order to solve this immediate thing? And did you know, I mean, when he showed that to me, I said, I'm sorry. And I went through. I'm going to start writing a list for you. I'm going to give it to you at the <laughs> end here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do the same thing to Mike and Carrie. But anyway, that's one way that you deal with it. But you can't let them get on the inside of you. That's right. And sometimes you just have to yeah. establish some boundaries and say, look, I can only do so much. And, and people are fearful and say, but I could lose my job or something. You need to keep your peace with God. You need to keep your relationship with your family. And you need to sometimes tell your boss that, hey, I don't work 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple ways of dealing with that. Amen. Man, we're out of time. I would say this. We had a couple questions in here that specifically, you know, how do I pray? Pain in your body, some different things happening with your children. Please call our helpline. They would love to pray with you mm -hmm. and then encourage you on some resources that can help build up your faith. So 719-635-1111. I would really encourage you guys to reach out. We would love to uh, interact with you tonight on these issues that you brought up. And let me say that if you've got questions about something that I said and says, does he have any more teaching on this? Mm -hmm. Our phone ministers have a computer in front of them that you could talk about any topic. They yeah. uh, type that in and it'll bring up every teaching series that I have on that. And, and not only me, but Carrie and Mike and our Caris instructors. And so yeah. you've got a wealth of resources, 200,000 hours, hours of free material on our website. Amen. So uh, anyway, you can call and they will help you find something. But Thank you for joining us. Amen. I believe that this helped you tonight. God bless you, and we'll see you again next Tuesday or 7 o'clock Tomorrow morning, morning, and we have Rick McFarland. Oh, Daniel Amstance. Daniel really? Amstance is going to be joining us tomorrow, and he's one of our favorites. People love listening to Daniel, so join us at 7 o'clock in the morning. All right, God bless you. Good night. Ready to develop leadership skills and expand your influence? Don't miss the Kingdom Business Summit, June 16th through the 18th in beautiful Woodland Park, Colorado. Hear from New York Times bestselling author John C. Maxwell and CEO Billy Eberhardt, Paul Milligan, Karen Conrad, and Dean Radke as they teach about success and business. Bring your colleagues to learn biblical business skills and grow your network. Register now at kingdombusinesssummit.net.